So today's video is all about liability experts in medical malpractice cases. So uh, someone who's injured by uh, a doctor's negligence. In order to prove liability, he's going to need an expert, presumably a doctor, to uh, testify that um, the defense, the defendant, uh, care fell below the standard of care for that field. Um, and there's a recent Supreme Court of Ohio case uh, that addressed whether a doctor is competent to testify as an expert as it pertains to liability. Um, and it really all revolves around a rule of evidence, Rule 601B, and, and the case is Johnson versus Abdullah. It came out in September of 2021. And this evidence, Rule 601B, basically states that in order for a doctor to be competent to testify about liability in a medical claim, that expert has to devote at least half of his professional time to uh, the clinical practice in his or her field or really teach in that field. This case fo uh, focused on the active clinical practice part of the rule. Um, so we have this case, Johnson versus Abdullah, and the plaintiff sought to exclude testimony of a defense doctor because the plaintiff argued this doctor wasn't in the active clinical practice uh, in that doctor's field at the time of trial. Uh, so at the time of trial, this defense expert was the chief operating officer of a facility. Most of his work was administrative. He wasn't treating patients or overseeing anyone who was treating patients. Um, so that was kind of the reason why the plaintiff sought to exclude him because he more had an executive position at this point. Um, no doubt trial proceeded several years after the complaint was filed, after the alleged malpractice occurred. So what's interesting is at the time of the alleged malpractice or when the complaint was filed, uh, this doctor was not the chief operating officer. This doctor was more active, um, more involved in the practice. So the question was, whether the doctor had to be in the active clinical practice at the time of the malpractice or at the time of trial. And what the Supreme Court of Ohio said was under this rule 7 or 601B, um, the doctor, in order to be able to testify about liability in a medical claim, must be in the active clinical practice at the time of trial. So the, the Supreme Court of Ohio said in this instance, um, the doctor was not competent to testify, even though by all accounts, this doctor was very accomplished, probably had the training and experience to be able to testify. It's just under this rule and the specific provisions of this rule, um, the doctor had to be excluded. And the Supreme Court went on to basically say that uh, a doctor who's in an executive position at a facility who doesn't really oversee patients or doctors who are treating patients just isn't going to satisfy the active clinical practice provision of the rule uh, and therefore held that um, this defense expert's testimony shouldn't have been allowed at the trial. So, you know, what does this mean? It's interesting because a doctor who, when malpractice occurs or who, when the party retains that doctor, who may satisfy the rule at that time, may not at the time of trial. These cases, medical malpractice cases, are pretty uh, complicated. And many times, uh, several years pass by between the date of the malpractice and the date of the trial. And you know, these experts can be retained early on in the process and their positions change. Um, perhaps some doctors may even retire. Uh, so you, you really have to be cognizant of uh, what your expert is doing at the time of trial because the last thing you want uh, is to have a doctor's testimony excluded uh, because they've changed the nature of their work, the scope of their work. Um, and it just goes to show that these cases are complicated. Uh, it's really tough to go at it alone. You really need a good attorney who uh, knows the ins and outs of these cases to represent you 
to make sure that one of these procedural rules or evidence rules doesn't sort of work to your disadvantage at the end.